730, I'll call this for council meeting to order. So I mean the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> evening with our roll call. Sure, thank you. Uh, I love a great one. So. Announce an event, uh, item of public interest, anything from council? Same offer to the public. Yeah, so I was going to wait till the committee report, but I guess it is a good time right now. So, um, as a new liaison to the Tree Shade Committee, um, just kind of want to throw out they're giving away uh, 10 trees. They're going to be planning in November. Um, it's a great program. They want to get new people involved too. That's the important thing. Um, they want to kind of first serve those people who have never uh, taken advantage of the program. So they would like to get new trees into new yards in Yardley Barrow. Um, and then, like I said, if people are repeat customers have gotten a free tree in the past, um, we'll get those people second. But uh, it is on the Yardley Facebook page um, to give everyone a heads up. Um, it's a great program and a tree uh, shade committee does really good work and good people. And uh, it's a great program um, and they'll be doing it in November. So please reach out to them. Um, if you're interested in a tree and they have all different types, I was just talking to Leanne, she ran into that they're also trying to get different hybrid types that are more resistant to some of, um, you know, the invasive species of insects and things like that that have been plaguing some of the trees here um, in Yardley and Bucks County. So. Thank you, John. And just for point of clarification, that can go on private property, right? So yes, yes, in, in people's buy. yards, exactly. Yeah. In people's yards, that's what they're looking to do on, on private property, and they'll plan it for you. They do a fantastic job and give you information how to tend for the tree, too. Great. If anyone wants a tree, let us know. Can I hear something from Mr. Finer? Are we good? All right. We'll close out community announcements and move right on to five. in applying to serve on the Historic Architectural Review Board. Paul can get you the application, and that will then be reviewed by council. I think we do need to formally accept the resignation we receive that, but we can do that later on. Right? Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, yes. Stick it in that for now. All right, uh, moving on to public comment. This is the portion of the meeting during which members of the public may address council regarding items that do not appear on the agenda. If you wish to address council regarding an item that does appear on the agenda, you'll be able to do so uh, prior to council's vote on that particular item. Residents are asked to please come to the front microphone, state their name and address for the record, and uh, public comment is limited to three minutes apiece. Anyone like to make a public comment tonight? Dr. Perlmutter? Yardley Borough Manager, Yardley Borough Secretary, Yardley Borough Right to Know Officer, and as an auxiliary police officer with the Yardley Borough Police Department. The police officer position is an obvious conflict of interest. Her salary for the Borough Manager position, not including benefits for this year, is $80,598. I do not know what, if any, she's getting paid for other positions. 
Additionally, she has a pension under the Darby Borough Police Department's collective bargaining agreement as a non-uniform. Ms. Johnson's qualifications for the position of borough manager have been questionable. In fact, there was a lawsuit on how she was hired. Because she did not meet the basic qualifications for this position, large portions of her job are outsourced at a huge expense to taxpayers. A financial assistant had to be hired to do the town's budget on the primary jobs of the manager. Engineers and consultants are paid to solicit grants and deal with issues that a qualified manager should easily be able to address. As the right to know officer, she rarely provides documents from RTA requests in less than 35 days and almost always hires the borough attorney to respond to requests, again, incurring more legal fees. There are significant breaches in confidentiality in many areas, including copying emails, gossiping about residents' personal information, and disclosing who filed complaints against whom. Contracts have been awarded without being bid on, and the few that are bid on are questionable since she has no regard for confidentiality. In the position of manager, she's supposed to supervise code enforcement, building, and zoning officials. Her mismanagement has resulted in the current animosity and divisiveness throughout the town and has significantly increased borough legal fees who have to respond to many potential lawsuits due to the inability to manage this office. Manager Johnson continues to abuse her position by engaging in cronyism, especially in the form of arbitrary and capricious code enforcement. She continues to allow certain buildings to be renovated with obvious major structural changes without requiring zoning, engineering reports, or architectural drawings. In fact, she even ignored a complaint that was forwarded from the fire marshal months ago regarding an apartment building that is in violation of fire safety codes. She prioritized protecting cronies at the expense of tenants' safety. There is little and often no response to residents' emails or inquiries. The question is, why council is ignoring residents when they bring these issues up? Um, when I'm on council, I will not ignore serious allegations and will respond when someone brings them up. I hate to bite. <laughs> Do you want me to say it? <laughs> so I'll let Mayor Harding do it. I would just like to put on the record that I think there were a lot of opinions in the statement read, many of which I do not agree with and I don't think council agrees with. And I also think there were some facts and some statements made that were made as facts that I believe were untrue and incorrect. So I'd just like to have that on the record. I would also like to echo Mayor Harding's comments. I would refer you to your performance evaluation this past year, which was positive. Also, isn't it fun when your compensation package is public information? Mine is too. I love it. <laughs> is there any other public comment tonight? All right, hearing none, we will close that portion of the meeting. Next up is consideration of the consent agenda dated for today, October 5th, and includes three items. Those are approval of the minutes for our September 21st meeting, approval of the bills list dated today, October 5th, and approval um, for the Veterans Day procession and memorial. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? So moved. And the banner. And the banner. Sorry, I'm looking at the old agenda. So added to that list is the banner uh, for Beer Fest, which will be there for October 13th to 25th. So a motion was made by Mr. Ross, talking to Ms. Stephen Morris. Is there any comments or questions from council? Anything from the public? Dr. Perlmutter? Thank you. Um, two questions on the bills list. One was um, a check from McLaughlin, check number 19279, $400. Is that for training or membership dues? Oh, okay. Um, the other one was um, the Streetlight Fund, Armor and Sons Electric, check number 955 for $140.20. Armor and Sons Electric has received 
$261,114.91. That's a lot of light bulbs. Um, I think a large portion of it was a bid contract. That went through a formal bid process. It went through a formal bid process. And it was great. It was the project at Main Street, the redo. Yeah, I understand. Um, so there were other bids on that one also. Yes. And they were going to look at it. it has to go and the engineer handled it, and not the manager. And who, who solicited the bid? It was done many years ago. It was from prior to so. Okay, through the engineer. Okay, not, not the manager. I, Actually, I it was probably a draft, but I don't know it was yeah. before anyone here was on council. Yeah, the borough solicits the bids. You know, someone prepared the bid package, but it's the borough itself that seeks bids for these right. projects. Yeah. And there are, there are technical components of a bid that require. <clears throat> yeah, which is very specifically. Right. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments on the consent agenda? We now I'll call a question. All those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Extensions carry 7 0. Chief Kelly, please report is next. Thank you, sir. I have two items tonight. The first is the monthly statistics for the month of September 2021. The police department handled 473 calls for service issued 12 parking tickets. We issued 88 traffic citations, investigated five traffic accidents, and made four arrests, one of which was for DUI. Second item is that Officer Daniel Baxter resigned on the 30th of last month to accept a full-time position with the Temple University Police Department. And we, Officer Baxter was a five and a half year veteran. We wish him the best of luck in his future career. And that's my report, sir. Thank you, Chief Kelly. Uh, we'll move right along to Manager Johnson, your report. We continue to work on the draft 2022 budget. Everything seems to be going well, and I thank Council for all their input, and that's all I have tonight. All right. Thank you. I'm going to brag about your accomplishments today a little bit. Uh, we got some motion on the Pico property, which is good, good news. Um, that's been bouncing around for a while, and we just got some communication from them. Today, thanks to Paul as much. Uh, so hopefully that will be on agenda sometime soon. All right, uh, Ms. Clay, engineer's report. Sure thing. Um, so unless anybody on council has any questions in regard to the general update items, I don't have anything different than what was put in the report to that. Please, <clears throat> agenda. All right, hearing none. Mr. Finer, we'll update on that in the project update section, so that's an agenda item in just a few minutes. Sure. Sure. And then I was also confused about the project updates versus the general updates, so I'll save. Okay. It sounds like project updates are uh, up next. Well, people care. <laughs> <laughs> Can you um, elaborate a little bit on the perspective timeline of when it's going to go out the bid potentially, and then when, you know, is there a potential idea when we break ground? 
Yeah, at this point in time, we're probably looking at not breaking ground until spring, just because we're going to get into the cold weather. Um, when I spoke with the grant coordinator, he said executing the agreements um, has typically been taking about six weeks for them to go through the full review process, but we think that if we ask um, our representatives to kind of step in and get it moved to the top of the pile, it hopefully will not be that long. Our goal is to get under contract before the end of the year, um, so that as soon as the weather breaks and not they can get started right away on the sidewalk. Um, so yeah, as soon as the, the bid package is, is approved, we'll immediately put it out for the first round of advertisement. Um, but yeah, without knowing when they're going to approve the grant agreement, I can't give you like an exact. Yeah, I just like to give updates to neighbors and, you know, because it is something that constantly people yeah. ask about. We're, I mean, we're going to break ground come spring. There's no way to miss that deadline without like, where we're at right now. Um, and then right now... Is there, is there, is there a, a time when you say because the ground, I mean, if, when you're able to get that process to be short, let's say six weeks to two weeks, um, you, I mean, is, there, is, there, is there any possibility Potentially. It would depend on the contractor that ends up winning the bid. If they decide that they can get the work done before the ground freezes, we'll, they can do that. It'll be more up to them. We'll make sure to put through the contract as quickly as possible and give them the go-ahead, and then it will be up to them when they start. In terms. So if we end up having a mild winter, maybe, maybe we could get it done before the end of the year. But it's very dependent on when we get the, the bid agreement through. Um, but speaking of that, uh, moving forward with phase three, the next round of Kanbat's MTF grant applications are due on November 5th. Um, so the council will need to make a decision tonight as they would like to move forward with putting through an application for phase three. I didn't speak for the grant coordinator, asking them how they felt with the fact that we are not we don't have exact documents yet. We don't have like full length and like full page or what have you um, and how competitive that would be. And they said they do prefer the shovel ready projects, but also sometimes showing that you've already applied for this can bring you higher in, in the next round. And we've already developed some of the attachments from when we did the DCE MTF grant um, back in July. So it's up to council if they want to move forward with an application for the sidewalk but I am encouraging us to put an application forward with four year and the bridge because they did say that we need to look at the project for pedestrian access. All right. Well, let's... Could potentially be doing two applications or one. Let's, uh, let's take them one at a time. Let's actually let's start with the other bridge. <laughs> um, I want to do anything that would be misleading. 
I can certainly ask if that's something that would strengthen the application of submitting those as well. Liz had a question about just the cost efficiency. If, if you're already doing one application, let's say that we decide to move forward with an application on Mary Yard Bridge, um, obviously there's a familiarity it'd be from the same entity, the borough. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a cost effectiveness by applying together, doing it at the same time? Would it take a lot less hours and, and be cost efficient if we were able to do two, or is it not really matter? It doesn't really matter because they're completely separate applications but we do already have a profile that exists for your world because we have already submitted applications for this particular grant in the past. Um, so there's already those cost savings in that regard. Um, but unless we wanted to apply at the F1 project, which I don't think is totally off the wall because this overall effort was to do this connectivity project to create a pedestrian pathway into the downtown to the towpath. So I don't think it's totally out of the realm to put those together. But would we lose if we weren't? Because the, the sidewalk's not shovel ready, and therefore we hurt our chances to get something for the Mary Yard the Bridge is just a question. I, I, can, I think I'm supposed to have another um, conversation with, I spoke, the rep that I spoke with, they, I wanted their supervisor to kind of weigh in on some stuff, and I'm supposed to talk to them on Thursday. So we can ask if um, that would be a judgment. Because sometimes what they will do is they won't give you the full amount that you've asked for. Like they might just give us the stuff for the bridge. Gotcha. So it may not result in that situation where you, you know, the detriment to the bridge. So yeah, we can we can figure that out with what combination. So I just want to make sure we have consensus from council on that. So we are going to look at approving resolution and application potentially at the next week, the next meeting, which means the public works has some homework. Yeah, we'll, we'll iron it out which has the best chance of survival for separate <clears throat> or together. I mean, I think certainly the bright side on the sidewalk portion, or probably on both portions, that if we are denied this year, we will almost certainly apply again. Um, so it's not as if work that's done just sort of evaporates and goes to no use. It's probably largely able to recycle that, I imagine. Yeah, no, and a reminder for phase two, we applied to the NGF grant three times before right. we were awarded it. Um, but we were given it once we've actually done the sign. Because they does seem like they need, they need it when they say they want shovel ready for it. Yeah. Um, Right, we'll probably have a more clear picture next time if we have a, a ballpark estimate of, of application preparation costs. Um, typically for the PennDOT ones, since they are a little bit more involved, they've been ranging from 25 to 3,000 for the projector to do that. Okay. And it's a nice segue to the next one. How shovel ready are we on the Mary Arthur Bridge project? Are we ready to turn the page yet? <laughs> I mean, the plans, like the structural plans and everything is done, but right now the plans are based off of the aluminum bridge. So right now without knowing what we're doing um, with regards to the material, some of the, the details will need to, to 
to change, but we have the grading plan and the EMS stuff, so there's a full plan package. So it will definitely have like a nice plan set that can be submitted with it, and we can just provide the specs that we have from the different vendors, and then um, the vendor option will be very dependent on budget. Certainly more ready than the sidewalk. It should be at this point, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, any other comments, questions? Yeah, Chris. Do you think you could just give 30 seconds on the ML7 project just so we get it on record that we're continuing to talk about it? Yeah, ab Thank absolutely, you. sure. Um, so last week they had their hearing with DEP, um, significant fines were levied, and then they moved forward with having a pre construction meeting on Friday. Um, they are still awaiting a right of entry from the golf course before actual work can begin. Um, but things are indeed moving forward with this. Um, they are cleared to uh, remove all the fallen trees and they are cleared to um, restore the stream bank. And we are still working back and forth with Gilmore to ensure that their final plan with um, moving Yeah, I want to just return to the Marioli Bridge, um, and especially the materials. And I know we we had looked at another um, company. Where where does that stand, and is, or is that something we should discuss at Public Works? Um, we probably can discuss it at the next Public Works meeting. But I did follow through with that other the Rolling Barge, <coughs> and with the fact that they do not do um, coatings themselves. They don't do like a basic like rust coating like the other, you know. All right. Um, any other updates on projects? Um, the FEMA elevations are going pretty smooth so far. Um, right now, the last round that I think we're going to move forward with the inspections this year are the properties. So we're just working to schedule those. Um, but uh, 93 North Delaware, they have some significant changes that they want done um, that are outside of the scope of the FEMA grant, and we don't want to impact that um, those monies. So we have put together a proposal for those homeowners to prepare the plans that they want to, to and see if they want to move forward with that so that we're not competing them with the grant budget. Um, okay. so Just to be clear, though, they can do improvements outside the scope, but it gets limited in terms of where the grant applies versus where they have to pay for themselves. Correct, yeah. And so um, basically, the situation is some of the changes that they want will result in a significant amount of money out of their pocket. But before they decide to move forward with those changes, they want to know what that's going to look like. Okay. But we have to do the designs and then the beam types to give them a cost estimate. So that's, it is time. It's not a significant amount of change, but it but is time. time. All right, any other final questions before we move on? All right, close the engineer's report, move on to solicitor's report. Uh, thank you, but I have no report. Nice and easy. Mayor Harding, do you have a report tonight? Sure, just real quick. Um, we've had a couple really fun radio shows, thanks to people involved in helping us set those up. Uh, but today, it, I think it's just important that I tell you guys, we spoke with Jess from Chrisit, who's a new business. Um, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Chrisit on East Afton Avenue. And we also spoke with Dino from Ambassador Engineering. So they took up pretty much a whole hour. So it was a great way to promote their new businesses and welcome to town. So. Very good. Thank you, Mayor Harley. Thank you. Council member reports. Uh, does anyone have a report today? I'll, I'll just say um, we, we talked about the issue of parking at um, 
had community economic development and uh, we had John Simone in and he had some ideas and you know we and, and I'll welcome anyone to come out to community economic development we're going to kind of have a conversation about parking over the next couple months to see where we stand if there's any possible solutions to an issue that many residents are concerned about so that's it thank you okay. any other reports tonight? all right we're on course to make this a quick one. Uh, we have nothing listed for discussion items or other business, so unless a member of council would like to raise an item now. Well, we need to accept but the resignation. We need to accept yeah. the resignation. <laughs> that is why I have a very good of council. <laughs> uh, so, do we have the name handy? Vladimir Panel. Right, is there a motion to accept Vladimir Panel's resignation from the Historic Architectural Review Board? I'll make that motion. Motion is made by Ms. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Ross. Any discussion from council? Anything from the public? Hearing not, I'll call the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries, seven to zero. And now, I will ask if there's a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. You ate all of those? No, sir. <laughs> There's one there. <laughs> you want it? Take it home. That's yeah. glue's good. Yeah. It's good. Never had it. Good. Had I just had one. Take it. I just had one. It's good. Uh, sir, how are you? Yeah, good. My son's still uh, telling people about his uh, radio show appearance. There you go. He did great. He was. Uh,